the new Google model outperforms Anthropics Cloud and OpenAI GPT-40 and GPT-4. This is very exciting and amazing. It seems like in the new arena board, the leaderboard by Hugging Face, Gemini 1.5 Pro has outperformed, is outperforming the other leading models. And I had to give it a test and see if it's really better. So in this short video, I'm going to show you an interesting demonstration or experiment that I have run with the new model, which is experimental and also completely free at the moment. Before we dive into the demo, let me show you some numbers. So as you can see here are all the leading models. So Gemini 1.5, Gemini uh, GPT-40, GPT-40 Mini, Claude 3.5 Sonnet. I'm also using the leaderboards provided by Ader. Ader is a, an AI coding assistant. And over here you can see that they are ranking Claude um just a second this is the refactoring leaderboard we want to see the editing leaderboard so obviously Claude Sonnet is the top performing model in terms of editing leaderboard afterwards we have DPC coder and afterwards we have GPT-40 so these are very interesting leaderboards that you guys should definitely check out now for today's topic I'm trying to cover and see if the new model by Google is really better than the top players, at, which are Claude and GPT-4 and GPT-40. So what I did, I wanted to be a bit more creative this time. So instead of asking it a few reasoning questions and see what it does and compare it to Claude's uh, reasoning abilities and OpenAI's GPT-4 reasoning abilities, or even asking it to write a Python code for Snake, I wanted to leverage um, the model's best ability, in my opinion, which is the fact that it can analyze videos. So what I did, I have a prompt library, a prompt saver extension that I wrote using Claude. Basically, this um, Chrome extension, I wrote it for myself within like 10 minutes using Claude a few weeks ago. And the whole idea of this prompt library is I can add prompts over here. Here's a test prompt. Let's assume it's way longer, more detailed, system instructions, uh, examples, etc. Then I add a tag and I add a category. When I save the prompt, it is being saved over here. Obviously, the design is pretty ugly, and this is what I wanted to fix in this in this experiment. And afterwards, I can filter the prompts using different tags or filter them by keywords. And I can also sort them by the dates that they were added and sort them by usage. So anytime I click on the copy button, the prompt is being added to my clipboard and the usage it goes up by one. So this is actually a, a non-functioning, I mean, it seems like there are a few bugs, but I, I wrote a different prompt library. Let me show you the prompt library, although it's not the topic of this video, it's called the prompt server. This is what I created with Claude. And as you can see over here, I have all the usages counting up whenever I use, I can start different prompts. I can filter them, I can search and I can solve them. And this is very useful. I use it for canned responses and also for prompts that I use often. Now, what I wanted to do, I uploaded a screen recording, and this is amazing because it actually leverages the useful ability of Google's uh, models that can analyze also videos. So I recorded a, a screen recording of myself covering the prompt library, what exactly the prompt library is about. And then I told it that I want to create something similar to the prompt library, but just make the design nicer and use and make the style inspired by Canva. And I didn't give too many details regarding Canva, but I did 
uh, use the screen recording. Hopefully, I wanted to analyze the screen recording because it, it is able to analyze the video and based on this, create the design for the new um, Chrome extension. So let's see what it did. So basically, this is the video. Let's see if we can view it over here. I'm not sure if we can view it, but it's not crucial. But what it did afterwards, so I told him, follow the instruction in the video. First, tell me step by step your plan. So its response was, sure, let me, here is the plan, understand the task. The user wants to recreate the HTML code for an extension and improve the styling of the extension. Recreate the code, update the HTML code for the extension to make it more efficient, improve styling, update the CSS code for the extension to improve its appearance. Now I told it to write the specifications in the most detailed manner possible. So recreate the HTML code for the prompt library extension. Overall structure, the extension features a main window with these key elements, prompt library, add new prompt, text area from prompt input, field for enter tags, comma separated and enter categories, save prompt button, filter the prompts, drop down menus to filter by tag, keyword and category, apply filters, and the sorting ability, each prompt displayed with edit and delete buttons. And bear in mind this, I didn't tell him about all these features, but it saw, it. Uh, I, I screen recorded everything, so it analyzed the video every small segment of the video and it realized the specifications based on the video. And this is pretty crazy and mind blowing because at the moment when I wanna build stuff, um, I sometimes, very often provide screenshots or uh, mockups of what I want to create but now you have the ability to actually screen record and use the video and also speak and, and commentate and give guidelines while you're speaking and also showing the elements of the of the website or the mockup in real time in the video so this is very useful so it breaks down the functionality and afterwards it says code efficiency the existing code doesn't look nice per the video so this is what i said and it needs to be written for optimal efficiency and improve the styling visual references the user wants a styling like this website and this is what i said in the video and points to the canva website as a reference key aspects of the canva design to consider clean and modern aesthetics simple lines spacious layout good use of white space clear topography clear typography, not topography, effective use of color and visual hierarchy, specific styling considerations, etc, etc. An important note, the video doesn't con uh, provide the existing HTML, so you need to start from scratch or ask the user for the current code base. So I told it to start from scratch, build the Chrome extension, and it started creating the project. It first provide me like the man manifest.json file, then it created the pop-up HTML and the pop-up JavaScript file. Now I gave it a go and I added it as a Chrome extension and it threw an error. So I tried to fix it using just prompting the model, the Google model to fix it and it didn't. So I uploaded all the files to Claude this time, and this is what Claude said. I'd be happy to help fix the code, however, and need more information about what specific er issues or errors you're encountering. And then it elaborated about the error. So the pop-up HTML seems to be using a custom syntax that might not be a valid HTML. It should be converted to proper HTML structure. The pop-up JS has incomplete sections. So it commented out a few things the CSS looks fine and the manifest JSON looked fine as well. Uh, looked fine as well. So I copied all these uh, errors, I mean all these guidelines, back to the conversation with the Google model, and I asked it to fix based on this. So it made another iteration. It tried to fix, but it didn't work again. So uh, eventually, I decided. To move back to Claude, I asked Claude to fix it, and then I decided, okay, let's pause for the video at the moment because what I realized is, based on this very short experiment, that still the Google model isn't 
so powerful in terms of coding, at least based on my very short experiment. And Claude Sonnet is way better in terms of coding, again, based on my experience. But I think this would be very cool if, since Claude doesn't have the ability to analyze videos, I think working with both models and leveraging each one's ability is very powerful, also for cross-referencing between code. But, le but mainly for when you're just in the ideation stage and you want to come up with ideas and you already have, maybe you already have the idea, but now you want to start building the specifications and the whole uh, project on provide references, it's way more convenient to do so using um, screen recording instead of trying to create many screenshots and guiding the guiding Claude in this case. So what I think I would do in my next experiment is basically screen recording my specifications and my idea and the whole vision of the project using a video. Then I'm going to ask Google, Google's model to write a very detailed specification and I'm going to take the specification provided by Google and by the Google model and then move, move it to Claude and use Claude in order to generate the code. And then if Claude will uh, underperform or if I run out of requests in Claude, I can always come back here um, to this model and try to adjust and, and make tweaks so it will work. Another cool thing about this model is the fact that it has a huge talk, a context window, which I'm not sure if it's a positive thing or a bad or, or a negative thing because most often when we have very big context window, um, the model doesn't know exactly where to focus and where to put weights. But it might become very useful when you have a bigger project and many files and a huge uh, code base. It might be helpful to use a larger context window. Not sure, but it's definitely something to experiment. Okay, so let's start concluding. This is, was a very short experiment of the new model by Google based on the leaderboard in Hugging Face, it is the leading model in terms of capabilities. Based on my uh, observation of the coding abilities of Gemini 1.5 Pro, it's not um, there yet, at least when comparing to Claude Sonnet, but it is very powerful and the fact that you can use videos as input is mind-blowing and super helpful. And I think it will be it will work great for those of you who combine between the models. And um, that's it for today, guys. If you have any questions, ideas for improvement, leave them in the comment section. Obviously, if you haven't subscribed yet and you are interested in learning more about automations, marketing, and AI, please subscribe. And until next time, keep on automating.